speed limit's 40 miles an hour and uh, I didn't even get up to 40 miles an hour, so. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Edition Wrangler Unlimited, which is pretty crazy. But as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for providing us with the Jeep. Check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a Jeep. Let's just get right into the video. Under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that is actually paired to a five speed automatic transmission. Now you also can get a six speed manual as an option. Power outputs are 285 horsepower and then 260 pound feet of torque. Let's go over the front end on this Call of Duty edition. So you actually do get a special hood that comes with this particular package. It's kind of like this interesting like sport type looking hood. There is no venting on it, but it's just cool. Kind of like the bulge they have there in the middle. Just looks really good. You do get halogen lights for the headlights and you got the regular fog lights. You actually can put a winch into there, which is pretty cool. And you guys will notice, yes, it is real. So when you smash your Jeep into people, they will uh, definitely feel it, but that's the front end. So coming around the side here, we've got 285 millimeter tires on 17 inch rims in the front and in the rear as well. Notice that they are all blacked out. Now these tires were added on after the fact by the previous owner, but still pretty cool setup in general. The only thing that I don't like about the front end is how it kind of like tilts a little bit forward. The Rubicons definitely sit a little bit nicer, but more importantly, yeah, your Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 badging. And then the rest of the Jeep is just all blacked out. And that's part of this packaging is kind of going for that blacked out theme. Now here is the key fob for the Wrangler. It actually does come with remote start. So all you have to do is just press that twice. First time we'll lock it. And then second time we'll do the remote start and it'll pop on really quickly. You guys will hear that 3.6 liter V6 come to life. And then when you do want to shut it off, all you have to do is just press it again. And it shuts off. Coming into the back here, opening this up, you guys will notice that's pretty easy to open up. And then just like all the other Wranglers, opens up like that. Even the new ones do the same function right there. You still have the little thing under here, which I didn't pull the tab, sorry about that. Pull that tab like that, and then you can open this up. This is where you're gonna hide, or not hide, but put all the screws and everything when you do take the top off. And you can use it for some extra storage as well. Pretty easy to lock that up. Storage space in here, I mean, it's pretty similar to the newer Jeeps. Notice you got that for the sound system and this is all covered up, which is pretty neat when you do take the top off in the rear. And then when you are done, just gotta throw that down, throw that back on, it's pretty heavy. Now, the other thing that comes with this is you do get that Call of Duty cover on the back, which is definitely a pretty nice little touch and homage to the video games. And then actually like this, that goes all around the Jeep as well. Obviously that'll protect you when you are going off road, but it also looks cool as well. And then the gas cap, they also kind of customize that that comes with this package and that's everything for the back now coming here to the rear here's the door panel in the back you actually have the little netting right there and notice that there's pretty much nothing else because you can take the doors off now here are the seats that come with this package so they do like the leather and they have like the cloth inserts which is pretty neat and this is crazy like the jeeps have so much more leg room in the jl series compared to the jk's and you guys can definitely see that but notice that right here in the center, you actually have your controls for the windows in the rear, a couple of cup holders as well. And well, that's everything for the back. Before we pop on front, something that was also cool that was added is these little convex mirrors that kind of help out with visibility. Not from the factory, just the previous owner added that. Now opening up the door here in the front, they actually give you some nice padding where you're gonna rest your arms. You got the door lock and unlock control. And then the seats here at the front, they're the same as the rear, but these seats just happen to have seat covers over them, which uh, see a rough country on them, obviously. So the seats underneath are probably pretty much like brand new, I can imagine. Got the Modern Warfare 3 mats that have the tire tracks on them. I think that's pretty cool. I like what they have with the pedals in this package too. And then notice that you do get the sway bar disconnect and axle lock since this is built off of the Rubicon package. And well, that's everything before we pop in. Now to start up, we just gotta put the key in, turn it over, and everything will come to life. And geez, the air conditioning is on at full blast. Okay, now we're good. Here's the steering wheel in the Modern Warfare 3 Jeep. So, you got the cruise control over on this side, obviously you got the Jeep logo, and then you have the controls for the voice commands, and then you have the controls for the center screen as well, right there. Kind of like signature Jeep steering wheel action going on there. You've got a little windshield wiper stock and then you have the stock for the lights on the other side. 
Now here in the gauge clusters, I just wanted to mention that you have the Modern Warfare 3 badging there in the center. Then when I close the door, it'll kind of show you that. And I've got the menu. Basically, this just shows you a couple different bits of information, but this is kind of more of like a really like basic system. It's not nearly as advanced as what's in the JLs. Obviously, this is just kind of like their old school cluster. And then again, I do want to mention these. So these only come with the Rubicons, and this is built off the Rubicon, which, I mean, that makes sense, right? Modern Warfare is all about going off-roading and all that kind of stuff in that video game because you're going through like war zones. So with your war zone Jeep, you are going to need these two functions, which these are going to help out with off-road and it also says off-road by it. Now coming over here, we're going to see if this uh, bad boy has a backup camera and well, it does not. But other than that, with this little screen system, it is a touchscreen, but this is super old school. So it's not really intuitive or user friendly, but if you're okay with kind of like a more old school system, then this will work for you as long as you're not using it too often. Now down here, you've got all the controls for the windows. So like, yeah, it's in the center. That's with all of the Wranglers. You got your circular vents, another hallmark of the Wranglers. Single zone climate. You actually do get heated seats in this package. You got your stability control, your hill descent control, and then this is actually to adjust the mirrors. Remember, they take everything off the doors pretty much. Your drive line select. So to get into your four wheel drive, for example, your four wheel low, and then this is the transmission selector for that five-speed automatic. You actually can manually shift the gears if you'd like. You got a couple cup holders here in this little area. Do get a traditional e-brake and totally accidentally hit the throttle. But you got the center console here. You've got the stitching on it. And then opening up the center console, you have storage right there. And then underneath, you got a little bit more storage as well. And then you got Jeep's glove box right here. And more importantly, it is a special edition. You actually do get a plaque with your production number on it. So Chances are you're not gonna see another one of these on the road, but you could run into another one of the 3,499. Now up top here, just like all the Jeeps, it does have the freedom top, so you can take it off just with those. The rest you do need tools for in the rear. And then the previous owner added insulation, which I always recommend because it is gonna help out with sound, especially on the highway. And one last thing I forgot to mention, Call of Duty. Now let's quickly get into pricing before we head off here in this Call of Duty edition. So this particular one is priced in the mid 20s. If you wanna see exact pricing, check it out on their website. And if you're wondering, it's got about 72,000 miles on it. But I have seen these Rubicons in the JK series, depending on mileage, some of them are down into the low 20s now. Um, a lot of them though are kind of sitting in that like high 20s, low 30s. Again, depends on mileage, depends on package, depends on year and all that kind of stuff. So they're still holding their value really well. It's still a really good vehicle to buy if you want something that's not going to depreciate a ton but that all being said let's take this modern warfare 3 out and see how it drives Let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the Wrangler Call of Duty edition. So visibility over the hood is just the same as any other Wrangler. It's really easy to see out of. It's just cool. You can kind of see everything that's happening with the design on that hood. Visibility through these mirrors with what they've added on actually is really solid. And then here's visibility all throughout the rear, which visibility with Wranglers in general has always been good. So that all being said, let's set off. Well, I am initially setting off here in the Call of Duty edition. If you guys are wondering why it's point of view, it's because Wranglers have completely straight windshields pretty much in all their other windows. So it's kind of hard to set up a GoPro suction cup mount setup. So you get a point of view drive. But regardless, let's actually compare this to the new JL series because I haven't driven a JK in a while. I've driven a ton of JLs and then also the JT Gladiators and Driving a JK makes me realize how far Jeep has come, to be honest. So first and foremost, the thing you notice is just how much this kind of like floats around on the road, especially with the steering. Like the steering on the new JLs is so much more precise than this. This kind of just like wobbles all over the place. It's kind of crazy. And then also with the steering itself, it feels a little bit heavier. But again, like I said, it's just not as precise as the new Wranglers. Like when you turn the steering wheel, the input doesn't do nearly as much as what the new Jeeps do. So the new ones just, oh, they've come so far. And then in terms of the body roll, eh, that feels about the same as the new JLs. So not much has changed from that. And the other thing to mention is just like, like I said, the visibility, when we was talking about that, the visibility is really good. 
um, but I just I don't notice a difference they pretty much kept that all the same even with the new Jeeps and the brakes they feel about the same to be honest they, I don't really I can't really perceive a difference so this is gonna be like our mini acceleration partial throttle and that five-speed automatic responds well enough I mean it kind of just like goes through kind of what you'd expect honestly so it's good from like a mild acceleration standpoint but We'll see kind of how it performs with a more full-on acceleration, I guess you would say. So, let's see how this goes. Well, the speed limit's 40 miles an hour, and uh, I didn't even get up to 40 miles an hour. So, I mean, that tells you the story. The new 8-speed automatic completely changed the Jeep. Like, it's just, it's so crazy to see how far they've come with these Wranglers. That new eight speed, just the gear shifts are so much smoother. They're so much quicker as well. It's just, it's come so far. And so here's what I have to say is, I think that the JK is still a really good value because they're still a lot cheaper than the new JLs just from a purchase price standpoint. However, if you do have the money to buy a JL, I definitely think it's worth it. Just like all the modern tech, if you're into that. And then that transmission, the difference is just night and day. I mean, it's huge. The acceleration on this is just, it just doesn't compare. Same engine, same power outputs, different transmission, completely different vehicle pretty much just because of that. So if you're looking at a Wrangler, like I said, if you can't afford the JL, the JK is a great route to go. It seems like they're holding their value really well. And if you can't afford a JL, I would get a JL. And by the way, ACR Viper. If you guys are watching this video, there's your treat for the day. Big Wang Gang. That's all. And there we have it, everyone. The 2012 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Edition. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for providing us with the Wrangler. Check out their inventory in the link below. I will see all of you in the next video.